Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and in today's video we'll be discussing the Blurs module. The Blurs module was introduced in the latest version of Darktable, which is version 3.8. We can use it to simulate, quoting the user manual here, simulate physically accurate blurs in scene-referred RGB space. Okay, we have three types of blurs that we can choose. Lens blur, which simulates the blur that you usually get from a lens diaphragm which is the one that we're used to. The second one is motion blur, which simulates the effect of camera motion. And the third one is Gaussian blur. It's not really an optical blur, but we can use it for denoising or for creative effects. All right, let's dig in into the controls. First, as you can see here on the top of the module, we have the shape of the blurring operator. This means that if we turn this on, all points in the scene will become a blot shaped like this. Let's try. There you go. You can see the effect already on her. I'll turn it off, turn it back again, and you can see it. Of course, I mean, we can see that it's blurred. You can't see the shape on this level, it's too small. But let's continue with the controls. The first one is the blur radius, which is the spreading size of the blur. Think self-explanatory. Higher will become more blurred. And you can see here the shape that we're talking about in the background. And less is no, less blur until you get to the minimum which is I think four yeah next we have the blur type which we already mentioned the default is lens you can use the drop-down menu to get motion and Gaussian notice that the bottom controls are dependent on the blur type all right well I did pick this photo so that we can see the effect. The photo is distracting because the rest of the background is not completely blurred but it's still quite visible. So the first thing we do is create a mask and here's one I baked earlier. We're going to invert it and there you go. So now we're working on this area. The first control is diaphragm blades. And this is the number of blades that the diaphragm of the lens that we're simulating is supposed to be composed of. According to the fine manual, older lenses typically had five or seven blades. Newer ones typically have nine or 11 blades. But in any case, real lenses have an odd number of blades. And if you put more than 11, then you're cutting close to creating a perfect disc. Let's try that. I'm going to put 11. You can see the blades change the shape here. Let's increase the blur radius just so that we can see the effect. You can see the effect in the back might be too much but here we go of course it would be better to actually have to have different shapes and maybe increase the feathering here so you don't have this harsh difference or transition between the two sides but for the purpose of this video this is good enough all right so I'm going to change the diaphragm See, the maximum is 11 because you're getting close to a circle. If we could put it back to, say, 5. Let's zoom in and you can see the effect here. This is 5, 7, 
and 11. Of course, there is no correct value. This is all a artistic module. So it's whatever you think looks better for the purpose that you are using it for. Next, you have the concavity. Doesn't exactly describe what that is in the manual, but since concavity is usually a attribute of the angles, then I presume it here refers to the angles as well. However, how it's measured, I can't see that from the manual. The manual, however, tells us what happens when we change the concavity, which is the most important part. So, a concavity of 1, which is the default, ensures that the diagram is a regular convex polygon. It depends on how many diaphragm plates you chose, you get a different polygon. If you put three, you get a triangle and so on and so forth. You know what we're talking about. Now, if we put a concavity greater than one, but lower than the number of plates minus one, the shape will turn into a star. Let's try that. So we have uh, seven blades here. If we choose anything between one and seven minus one, which is six, this should turn into a star. So let's try three. And there you go. So a concavity greater than the number of plates minus one, but lower than the number of plates, turns the shape into an asterisk. As long as the linearity is below one. Okay, let's do that again then. Put six, and then I'll change the linearity. There you go, it's an asterisk. Wow. Yeah, you could say this is a special case of the star. I mean, fine, but here we go. We'll get to the linearity. And then if we cho choose a concavity greater than or equal to the number of blades, the shape degenerates into a burst pattern. All right, let's try that. Seven. Oh, okay. Ten. Okay, a burst pattern, that's what they mean. Seven. Okay. Next we have linearity. Again, the only thing that the fine manual mentions is the effect of changing it, not exactly what it is. So we'll go with that. Uh, a linearity of zero creates a disk. Let's try that. Okay, a linearity of one makes all the outer bounds of the shape straight. Okay, so now we can deduce what it's doing. It's changing the shape of the sides of the polygon. And a linearity between zero and one makes the outer bounds of the shape more or less curved. You can see that while I'm changing it. So we're going from completely straight with angles to complete circle. And the last one is rotation. I think that this one is self-explanatory. It's not very, I think, well, all right. It's, it's still helpful. I was going to say, I don't know if it really matters in such shapes since there are so many axes of symmetry, but you can still use it. But let's try something maybe with less dia uh, diaphragm blades. Three, can I put three? Yeah. Well, here you can see it much more, and I think effective maybe. Anyway, next we have the controls associated with the motion blur. And the first one is direction. That's the orientation of the motion path in angular degrees. Zero degree, which is the default, is horizontal. And you can see here on the diagram above what kind of motion you're adding. You can think of that as the motion that you're moving the camera. It's the easiest way. Let's see if we increase the blur radius. Can we see then anything? Uh, yeah, see? It's blurred like this. I'm going to move the direction. 
and you can see how the blur direction here is changing as well. Next we have curvature and that's the curvature of the motion. Zero produces a straight line, negative value produces a concave curvature and a positive value produces a convex one. Again, it's the easiest is to see it here. Positive, as we said, convex, negative, concave. And the last one is offset, and this one shifts along the motion path following its curve. So what does that mean? Let's try. I'll, well, if you just change it like this, there's no effect because I think you're moving it along its path and it's just stays the same place. But let's try to add some curvature for instance. Just a bit of curvature. And then now you can see the effect. looks like it's just moving it but that's just just a side effect I think let's add some direction and then it's probably going to be more obvious let's say now we have a direction now if I move this to be honest I have a difficulty discerning what it's doing I can see what it's doing but not exactly what it's The, well, the formula what's what's happening I can understand the direction and the cur curvature but here even reading it again it shifts along the motion path following its curve what does it shift the offset what in any case the only thing that the manual says that it's useful to create a portion of the curved path that's symmetrical and then it gives examples so let's see the examples direction minus 45 curvature plus 2 and offset plus 0 0.5 okay yeah I can see it's symmetrical fine there is another one minus 45 1 and 1 again great I mean, I guess if you, that's the effect you want, but I still don't understand what the offset is, but you can use it to get these kind of effects. At the end of the day, you only need to use these to actually get the shape that you're looking for. All right, that leaves the third one, Gaussian, which actually does not have any specific controls. So with the Gaussian, you only get the blur radius. And then you can see here what the effect is and that's it. <laughs> Which leaves us with the caveats and the tips and tricks mentioned in the fine manual. And the caveats are that the uh, module uses a lot of processing power uh, and the runtime of the module will increase with the square of the blur radius. So the more blur you put in the more time it will take to process this module. And what we just noticed while we're doing this is that the blurring process as well does not take the scene depth and depth of field into account. If you blur, it will blur everything homogeneously. If you want to create a fake depth of field, you'll have to do what we did here and mask some of the photo out. And in the tips and tricks, it says that if you blur part of the image, the blurred region will lose whatever noise was in the image so it will look cleaner than the non-blurred part of the image so you might want to add some artificial noise in the blurred section of the image you can do that with either the grain module or the sensorize module and that's it for the blurs module i hope that you found this video interesting and entertaining if you have any questions requests or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.